Hello, I'm Greg. Welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a clickable dice and add it to your game. If we switch over to this scene here, you'll see I've got this asset that I got free off the Unity Asset Store. And all it is is the mesh and the materials for the dice. Okay, there's nothing in there to interact with physics, to roll the dice or get results from it. But I pulled that into my game and you can see down here, there's a number of prefabs for each of those different colored dice. And if we switch over to my scene here that I have running, you can see that pulsating on the board here, I have a white six-sided dice and I had this text here, click die to roll. And if I click the die, you can see that it rolls. And then down here, it says you rolled a one. So I'm going to show you how I did that. To start with, I dragged one of these models into my scene and you can see up there, it's just um, basically just a model that's sitting on top of my game board. So if I take it and drag it down to where we can see it, you can see it a little bit better there. Move them up a little bit, get them off the board. But there's no physics. There's nothing on there to interact with physics. You know, it's just a mesh renderer. There is a box collider. But we need a rigid body too to make this thing roll. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I essentially pulled one of these models into my scene and then I unpacked the prefab and I just renamed it and I added a rigid body to it. And one thing I did is I made it continuous dynamic on the collision detection because I want to make sure that if I throw a lot of force and I really get the thing moving fast, that it doesn't pass through the colliders without registering a collision. Um, the other thing I did is on my game board, I created a border and the border has a number of invisible cubes. I just turned the mesh renderer off. But the main thing was I wanted to add box colliders to surround the game board so that I can roll the die with a lot of force inside here and it will just bounce off the walls until it stops rolling. Um, the other thing I did is I put the border on its own physics layer and I put the die on its own physics layer and also the game board itself. Uh, it has its own physics layer. And if we go in and look at the physics settings and we look at our collision matrix, you can see that the die only collides with the board and border, right? So the dice will collide with the board and the dice will collide with the border, but it's not going to collide with our player pieces. So we don't have to worry about the die knocking over our player pieces from the board. And then there's the scripts. So you'll notice that I've got this click die to roll. Well, in order to be able to click the die, I needed to add a script to it to make it clickable. And so I'm going to do a separate tutorial on how to make an object clickable. But basically all you need to know is that I'm using Raycast to determine if the mouse has moved over the object. And, and then I'm also checking to see whether the mouse button is pressed or not. And if it is clicked, I want to know if it was inside the bounds of this object. That's the clickable object that I'm looking for. And like I said, I will go into more detail on the clickable object in the future. Uh, but the other thing, the main script on here is this dice roller script. So I have a roll die function that's public. And basically what I want to do, I've grabbed my transform. I grabbed my rigid body. I get all this stuff in awake. Uh, I also subscribe to the events on my clickable object. Uh, there's another script on here called pulse scale. And then I wanted access to the little text that you see there to say whether or not the click to roll text should be active or not. So initially everything's going to be active. You're going to see that text and I'm going to look for collisions too to know if I can play some sounds when it bounces off the walls or hits the board. Uh, but the main thing is when you click, click and I call roll die, then what I want to do is I want to get a target position that's going to determine where the force is going to send it. So essentially I want to get a target position that's 10 up and then one in either direction, uh, either left or right or forward or back. So I want to throw it up, but I want to throw it at an angle up. So not straight up. And so this gives me the direction. And then I just add force in that direction times my roll force, which is assigned in the inspector up here. 
and I tweaked those values in the inspector until I got something that seemed to work right. There's also torque amount, so in addition to adding force to send it flying through the air, I'm applying torque so it will rotate in a random direction. I'm just using random inside unit sphere, multiplying it times the torque amount, and then I'm using impulse as my force mode. Now, I also want to stop rolling or know when it stops rolling so I can determine what is the value, where did it land, and what is the current value that's on top. So I have this wait for die to stop, and it's a coroutine. Uh, and the first thing I do is I wait to see if the rigid body is sleeping and whether or not I've exceeded my max timeout that I've set, which I think I've set it to five seconds. But once I've done that, once I've determined that it has indeed stopped, I wait one more frame, and then I call this get die value function. So get die value, there's a number of ways you can do this. Um, what a lot of people do is they'll just use a cross product, and they'll look at the angle and the rotation of the object, and they'll use the cross product comparing it to like vector 3.up and vector 3.forward and vector 3.right. And they'll just, use, they'll just use math to calculate which side is up and then determine what the value is. I decided to just use ray cast. So I essentially have an array of vector threes, which are my directions, which are either going to be forward or negative forward, up or negative up, right or negative right. And then because I know that forward is one, then if the negative forward is touching the ground. If that's where my ray cast hits, then I know one is on top, so I have a one. So I'm gonna use negative forward, and if negative forward, if I hit something in that direction, then I know that one is on top, and that's the value I want. So basically, I iterate through these directions. I do a ray cast in those directions, and then if I hit something there, then I know which side is facing up. If I don't hit anything, I just continue and keep going through the array. But if I did hit something, then I'm going to return that index, which is 0 to 5. I'm going to return that index plus 1. So 0 would be 1, 1 would be 2, 2 would be 3, and so forth. If I was not able to get a ray cast, that means the die was maybe leaning against the wall, and so it's not able to actually hit the board, in which case I would return a 0. And I'll have logic in there to say, ah, that's a leaning roll, roll again. But that's how I get the value off of the die. Uh, you also notice that the die was pulsating. So I have a little script here called pulse scale. And I basically just assign how far in each axis I want to pulse. And then I have a start pulse method that just does a do tween to increase the scale. And then I have reverse pulse, which is another do tween that just scales in the opposite direction. Uh, and each one of those, their on complete method just calls the opposite one. So once I start pulse until I kill the tween, it's just going to keep pulsing indefinitely. Growing and shrinking, growing and shrinking, growing and shrinking. So that's pretty much that. If you uh, found that useful, and I really hope you did, do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button. And be sure to click that notification bell. I'm going to have some more in-depth tutorials on how to create a clickable 3D object in your game. Since it's not a UI object, it's actually a 3D game object in your scene. I'm going to show you how you can make those clickable. And I'm also going to show you how you can make them draggable. So be sure to click like and subscribe. Click that notification bell and you'll be alerted the next time I post a new tutorial. Thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.